let's build us a Victorian inspired Berkey water filter floor stand. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Julie and I am the author of the blog CapturingWonderland.com. I have such a fun little project to share with you today and I'm super excited. I have been planning a project like this for a very long time. I have a Berkey water filter. It is a water filtration system that basically sits on your countertop and it filters out all kinds of harmful chemicals that could be in your water. I love it. However, I have very little counter space and I don't want it on my counter anymore. So I thought about buying the Berkey stand, but it is $50 guys for a tiny little metal stand, which would then still be on my countertop. And because I don't want it on my counter anymore, I needed a floor stand. Now there are plenty of tutorials on how to build your own simple floor stand for a Berkey, kind of similar to those minimalist pot stands. Very simple design. If you wanted to go in that direction, you totally could. Be super easy to build. However, I am all about making things fit my personal aesthetic in this house. So that does not fit my aesthetic whatsoever. So I had to come up with a way to build something that would fit in with the Victorian vintage feel of my home and my design style. I was thrifting one day and I came across two of these pedestals. I, I'm not really sure what it was at some point. It's got a big old nail that I have to take out of the top. This was the more expensive one, but it was heavier and it was prettier. There was a $10 one and I almost got that one just because it was half the price of this one. This one was 22, but I just love it. It is solid wood and look at the detail on that. It is beautiful. So I'm going to turn this into my very own floor stand for my Berkey water filtration system. The second thing I need for this is going to be this wood round. I got it at half price on Hobby Lobby, so it was about $5, and it's going to fit right on top of this. So it's going to fit right on top of this, and that is the basis for my stand. So super simple project, let's get to it. So to start with this project, I'm going to need to get this ginormous nail out of the top of this. Looks like a fish hook now, but that's a big one. I missed the trash. So, I had thought about possibly stripping this down to raw wood, but then the problem remains that this would not match and that's an issue. So I'm thinking I may just have to paint it all one color and then distress it. Just distress the bottom part so that I can see the beautiful details and the wood come through. But for this part, the next part that we need to do is we need to attach it to the pedestal. We need to find the center of it first. Why do they make these stickers so hard to come off? Seriously. All right, I'm just gonna be on my underside because that's still kind of ugly. Missed my trash can again. All right, so it's just a plain wooden thing and I am gonna take it outside to sand it when it's all said and done. But first, let us get to installing it to the pedestal. So basically to find the center, we're going to use a measuring tape and a pencil. We're just gonna measure. This is 12 inches, so the center would be six inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark the six inches. From that direction and also the opposing direction to get the true center. Now I'm going to measure my base which is about five almost five and a half so that would be two and three quarters. That way I have marks for either side of this so that I know when it's in the middle. So I'll do that same thing over here. Two and three quarters. That line hits right in the center. There you go. The 
very rough drawing right there. And just to make sure, I'm going to measure each side. Pretty dead on. What I should have done was put the glue on first. So I'm going to be using wood glue. I'm not looking for perfection. I do want it to be even, however, so that it doesn't lean either which way, but this is pretty good. So now I'm going to load my brad nailer with one and a half inch brad nails. So I'm going to do a quick, I'm gonna do a quick sanding of the top outside and then I'm going to fill in the brad nail holes with wood filler. So while I'm waiting for that wood filler to dry so that I can sand it again, I am actually making a little bit of homemade chalk paint. So I have about, it's about this full half of a wide mouth pint jar, I believe this is this size. And I am going to mix about a quarter pint of Plaster of Paris and water. It's basically half half of Plaster of Paris and water. So half a cup of Plaster of Paris and half a cup of water. Typically I like it thicker consistency, but this Plaster of Paris is kind of getting old, so it's not working as well as it used to. So anyway, I'm just going to pour this straight into this. And I'm going to be using a mixture of a black paint I already had, which I think was Pretty Black Dress by Bear, and Iron Ore by Benjamin Moore. And it will get to be a pretty thick consistency, if it's right. Definitely thicker than regular paint, but not like so thick you can't stir it. I've got it, it's about three quarters of the way full here. I don't need anywhere near that amount of paint, but I'll just use I'll just use it sparingly here and there whenever I have a project and keep it in a jar all locked up. And this does have an expiration. It really won't last forever. It will start getting hard and the plaster Paris will start separating. But it does last a pretty long time. And I have tried several different types of chalk paints, other brands, and I've just not been impressed with any of them like I have the homemade recipe. This gets such great coverage in just two coats, and sometimes you don't even need two coats. Sometimes one coat is all you need. Now, if you're looking for like a complete coverage, then yeah, you'll probably always want two coats. But most of the time when I'm using chalk paint, I'm looking to also distress a piece. So I may not need to do two coats. A lot of times one coat is all that I need, and then I can distress it, and I can coat it with furniture wax, which is typically my favorite way of coating it. Or if it's a piece that's gonna get high use, then I would use a polycrylic or something of that type. Nice thing about polycrylic is it will never yellow over time. So that's one reason why I really like that. And furniture wax is the same way. It will not yellow over time, but it will wear off and then you will have to recoat it periodically. So anyway, let me take this outside and I'm going to sand it a second time to get all of that wood filler off and then we can paint. All right, I have it sanded at the top. Nice and smooth. So now I'm just gonna take a wet rag with a little bit of soap and I'm gonna do a quick cleaning over the whole piece because paint will not stick well, adhere well on dirty surfaces. So we're just gonna give it a really quick cleaning. All right, that is all clean. Now I'm just going to let this dry and then we can paint. I've got my little two inch brush, my paint. All right, it's done. And I'm only gonna do one coat, so I'm gonna let it dry 
and then I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna distress it. And you're gonna tell that when you distress it, any remaining brush strokes that you have, which I don't typically have a problem with brush strokes with my homemade chalk paint, but if you do have an issue with brush strokes, it disappears when you do a light scuff sand at the end. I'm gonna do a little bit of deeper sanding down here because I want it to be much more heavily distressed so I can see those beautiful curves and the really pretty dark wood that's underneath it. So let's let this dry and then we'll come back and finish it. And don't forget to clean your brush while you're waiting and possibly your hands if you're messy like me. All right, it is dry. So now I'm going to do a little bit of distressing. And I am distressing it fairly heavily because the color was basically just there to unify the whole piece, the new wood with the old wood. I wasn't trying to necessarily cover it all up, which is why I only chose to do one layer. And I made sure to hit every single area of the piece. So all of it has been distressed, at least a little bit. Now I'm gonna take a wet rag and I'm gonna wipe all of the excess off. So. This is after a good wet distress. See that? That was what I was going for. You really wanna see the wood grain through. So I'm really not covering it up entirely, just kind of unifying the two pieces. So I really like the distressing that I did. And so I'm going to let this dry off a little bit more and then I'm going to come back in with some furniture paste, which is a wax. And I'm going to do a thorough coat all the way around and probably let that cure and then come back in with a second coat. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, I'm gonna come back in with the classic. This is actually by Verathane, but I typically buy the Minwax versions. <laughs> Gosh, it took forever to get it in there. Anyway, so this is what I'm gonna use. So it looks all clear. I'm just using a rag, a little kitchen rag that I cut up. Typically I fold it too, make it kind of small. You just get some on the rag and then you start applying it. And you see it start to darken up really quickly and really make that color rich. So the differences between without and with Now it's completely applied. I'm gonna let it sit for a few minutes and then I'm gonna come back in with a clean rag and I'm gonna buff it, which will give it that nice sheen back to it because it does go matte after a while. It's looking pretty good. Okay guys, here it is in all its beautiful glory my lovely Berkey water filter, and it's going to live here in my dining room for the time being. And I think it's actually a perfect place because the kids do schoolwork in here and they often hang out so they can just quickly get themselves a drink of water. And it's a pretty convenient spot to have it. And I will say so myself that it turned out gorgeous. I absolutely love it. I think it fits in perfectly with the rest of my decor and that's what I was really hoping for. And it really didn't cost much cost at least half of what it would have to just get one of those simple stainless steel wire fixtures for a countertop. And it solved my problem, which is one of the biggest wins. And let me just say that every one of us has problems in our homes and we can be creative. We don't have to be frustrated about it. We can use it as a fun challenge. How can we solve our problems in our homes and still maintain the aesthetic that we're going for in our homes? It's a really fun 
thing that I love to do. I love the challenge of it. And I hope that you enjoy these types of videos. I love to bring you along with me. Thank you so much for watching all the way through. If you have made it this far, do not forget to like the video, subscribe to my channel if you aren't, be a part of this community here at Capturing Wonderland, and share it with any friends you think would enjoy this kind of content. Until later, thank you so much guys. God bless.